Hey crafty friend, it's me Justine. Today I'm going to be playing with some really pretty better press plates. These are from Paul Antonio. He is a calligraphist and a, an artist basically and he made these really gorgeous better press plates that are very clean and simple but stunning at the same time. So there's miss you, thank you, congratulations, happy birthday. I think I have a couple more back here. Let's grab them, but they're perfect for all sorts of different stationery. If you want to do like a bundle, do one of each and give it as a gift. And then there's also thinking of you and hello. So there's six of them all together. And you can see on the example covers on the front, they are beautiful as standalones. There are not dies that come with them. Just to mention that they are press plates only. So what I went ahead and did was I shopped my stash as I do and I did some pressing. So I have this one is a thank you and then I took the press plate that was from I think February 2024 and that one came with the hummingbird and I just put it on the top and the bottom and I used the thank you. I did one with happy birthday and I took that same press plate you can see it's the same one. And then I just kind of made a little background for my two sentiments there. And then with the Miss You, I did two of these with the butterflies. And I have never used that before. So it's been in my stash for almost a year. I know that's awful, isn't it? But here I am using it. And I think I'm going to just love coloring the butterflies. So while well, painting the butterflies. So I'm going to do one card each, one with the watercolor set from Ulta New and one with the watercolor pencils and then let's do like a side-by-side -side comparison so I'll do these two Missy ones and then I'll probably film these two but I'm gonna do that with some music over it at the end so just so you know so let's just do a comparison watercolor pencils and the Ulta New watercolors just in case you have one or the other at home and you're looking for maybe a tutorial of how to do either one so let's start with the watercolors since they're open and ready. I like to use my Mighty Mister from Spellbinders to start my paints. I always call this to wake up the paints. I'm a kindergarten teacher and when we do watercoloring and working with our Crayola paint sets, I always tell the kids we gotta wake up the paint with a little water. Okay, now that that is all nice and wet, I did two full sprays on the palette. I'm going to start my card. So when I work with just a regular paintbrush, this one is Horizon Group. I think I got this at Michael's when I was, I don't even know. I probably had this for like 20 years. Um, <laughs> I like to have a little bit of water on the side to work with. I don't like using a big cup or a bowl because you really don't need a whole lot of water when you are watercoloring. I just glanced at the camera it looks like I need to move some things up here so bear with me this is the color palette that came with the Ulta new um, paint palette on the box and I just cut it out so I could see the colors because sometimes they look so different on the paint palette than they do on your paper so another trick or another hack for that is to take a piece of watercolor paper scrap. I'm sure I have one around here. Not that. Oh boy. <laughs> here we go. And this is just a scrap. So if I need to test a color out, I can go ahead and test it and see what it will really look like on this paper. So for better pressing, I use the Better Press Black ink for my sentiment and then I used Thunder for the butterflies. I didn't want them to be too dark because I knew I'd be adding some pretty color to them. I'm going to start with this one which is called Fiery Sunset. I'm going to go for like a monarch butterfly look here. Let's test it out. Oh yeah. So I'll start with the one that's farthest away from me just so I can kind of work my way from left to right. I know monarchs sometimes have some white parts on their wings. I could have been really smart and looked at a picture of them before, but I did not. 
We have monarch butterflies in Minnesota and they look like these ones. This one, not so much. So I'm gonna do something different with that butterfly. But I have been kind of looking after monarch butterflies for years. I started when I was in first grade. My first grade teacher had us raising them and did it at home and it's just neat. They're around in the summer here in Minnesota and then they go down to Mexico for the winter because it is far too freezing <laughs> for them here in Minnesota in the winter. Yep, I'm going outside the lines a little bit here and I'll kind of fix that up in a little bit, but I'm just doing this for fun and enjoying my time here. Okay, now to give these butterflies a little bit of, I don't know, shading, if you will, <laughs> I'm gonna use my next darker orange, which is called Warm and Cozy. And it just has a little bit more of a red tone, it looks like, and go kind of in the middle of the butterflies and then just let the water do the work for me. So there's not water on the outside of the butterfly, just on the wings. So it will just kind of move for me. And that one's pretty dry, so I'm gonna get a little more water. And then as it dries, it just kind of spreads out and it looks amazing. So you just kind of have to trust the process on that one. Okay, I'm gonna kind of clean off my brush a little bit here start over with a new color. I think I'm going to do some splattering. So even though I went out of the lines here and here and here, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's go for like a blue butterfly to go with the orange. So I'm looking at my butterflies. I have one with pointy wings here and these two look the same. So I think I'm going to go for blue for these two. And then these two kind of look like moths to me. So we'll do blue, blue, blue. I think brown here. I don't know. Maybe we'll just go a little, a little outside the box. Maybe we'll go yellow, orange, and blue. And we'll just kind of mix them up. So we'll do blue, 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 and then make the other ones, no, oh, I don't know. Blue, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. Hmm. Well, I'll try yellow and see what it looks like. This one is called Pocket Full of Sunshine. Could you get a cuter name? I mean, come on. This one looks like a moth to me, but we're just gonna make it a yellow butterfly. <laughs> When you're painting, you can make the rules. This one's also another yellow, so we'll just go with it. And we'll go with some kind of orange on top of that one, which is the summer, summer afternoon. And just put that in the middle again, just giving a little bit of orange. It's not the same orange that I used on the other butterfly so it won't look just like it. It's kind of fun to play around with some different colors. I know that I usually like to do cool tone colors and I'm trying to stretch my color palette, if you will. I love cool tones, but there's something so pretty to me about yellow, orange, and blue together. I think it is a great combination. This is turning out pretty good for a brush that is old as dirt. <laughs> not really, but it's an old brush. It's nothing new. It's nothing that I had to go out and buy and it's turning out pretty good. Okay, let's start with some blue. I'm going to keep my yellow here because I wanted to do some splatter and that is a great amount for some splatter at the end. So I do have some yellow in my brush still. Whatever, I'm just going to go for it. Let's go with this one. It's called Long... No, Deep Blue Skies Long. What in the world? Okay, 
And then I'm gonna kind of tone it down a little because I want it to be a light blue on the outside. Oop, that's too toned, too toned down. There we go. And then I'm gonna put some dark blue on the center of the butterfly. I think I need to be a little more delicate when I'm painting, but we'll see. Maybe on my next one I could do like an ombre look. I guess to be kind of fun. I think that would be kind of neat. I know these butterflies are kind of all a little different, so that would be fun. Okay, let's go with the dark blue and really bring out that contrast with the orange. I need to get that going. There we go. Watercolor is one of those things where you have to kind of trust the process a little and just play around, make some mistakes, and just enjoy it. Okay, well, that is good to go. I'm gonna get some more blue paint here for some splatter to get that going, whoops. What is the one next to it called? Starry Night, Cool Summer Night. Let's see what that color is. Ooh, that's a dark blue. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, I wonder if I should put that on my butterflies. Yeah, that looks fun. And the water will move around for me, so that will be fun to see. By the way, I am using the Spellbinders watercolor paper. It does work well with the Better Press ink, and it plays nicely with the Alta New watercolors and the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. So that's a good one. I just got another pack when Spellbinders had their last sale, they had, I think it was 100, if you spent 125, you got 25 off, so then it ended up being $100 of a price, not the paper, but the total all together. And then you got $25 off. So I brought it down to $100, which was free shipping. Okay, let's pop this little guy into my splatter box. <laughs> Here's my splatter box. It's nothing fancy. It's just a reused box from, ah, <laughs> a reused box from a shipment that I got or a delivery, I guess. I'm going to quick move my iPad, move my camera a little so this will be seen. You might see a little bit of my lap here, but whatever. <laughs> okay. So for splattering, I just get some of the paint on my brush, have my box here, and then I like to take kind of anything really, but I'll just use this Sharpie since it happens to be on my desk, and I just tap, tap, tap. And you can see it's kind of giving a big splatter all over, and this one's pretty a fine mist, so I'm gonna hit it a little harder and get some bigger ones. Yeah, look at that. Super fun, and it's gonna work with the paper well, so it definitely gives a pretty playful look. Okay, between changing colors, I am going to heat set this, which means I'm going to use my heat embossing gun to make it dry. If you don't mind the colors mixing together, you can skip this step, but I would like the blue to play nice with my yellow and not make a green. So I'm just going to take my heat embossing gun. Here, we can move things back now. 
Thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> and I'm just gonna heat set this. I'm even gonna leave it in the box. And this is my heat gun. It's nothing fancy. It is, I don't even know how old, it's old, but it works. Um, I'll just do it on setting one. It's just a low setting. And I will mute the audio for this because it is rather an annoying sound. I'd say that is nice and warm. So now I'm going to take, <laughs> nice and warm, nice and dry. I'm gonna take some more of my yellow over here. I'm just gonna mix it up and give it a splatter splatter. I'm gonna use that Sharpie again. Here we go. Okay, my Sharpie has been helpful. Um, my yellow is turning a little green, so I don't really prefer that look. So I'm going to quick dab the big splatters that happened up there. And I'm going to make some more yellow and make it kind of like an orangey yellow so it doesn't look so green. I want that those two colors to play nicely together. Orange and blue are complementary colors, so they do go well together and it kind of plays well with your eye. I hope I'm explaining that right, but they're opposite on the color wheel from each other. So it just will look nice when you put them together. Okay, that's pretty clean. And we'll get some yellow. There we go. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of that fiery sunset in there just to kind of warm it up. Okay. Time to splatter again. Here we go. And I just realized I have my other projects kind of close by, so I am going to move those so they don't get splatter on them where I don't need them. Here we go, again. Yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. You will get paint everywhere if you splatter, so just FYI. <laughs> my marker has it on it. I now have a splat on my glasses. It's all good. <laughs> Watercolor is washable, so it's not a big deal, but you can even see on my box here on the cover that has paint on it. So splatter with caution. All right, time to try the next one. I'm going to let this just dry off to the side, but that's what it looks like after it's been splattered. I do like the look. It is just so fun and a little crazy. And it definitely hides any of those accident areas or mistakes that I colored outside the lines with, with my little paintbrush. So I think it is a win-win. And it's super playful, I will say. Okay, let's go ahead and try the next one. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit so we can get a bigger area to see. So when I'm using these, which are the Tim Holtz pencils, I like to color them first dry and then add color, add water to them afterwards and make them super vibrant. Uh, Tim Holtz has six of these packs, which is amazing. I have three, and they all coordinate with the Distress line. So these are the Distress watercolor pencils, and they are woodless. So there's no wood at all. <laughs> That's such a weird way to say that. They're woodless, there's no wood, obviously. Woodless, no wood. Um, but <laughs> they are just really fun to play with. So like I said before, I think I'm going to do an ombre look. Let's go, should we do a rainbow? Let's do a rainbow, why not? It's just so fun to do colorful things. I've been looking at my own Instagram lately at what I've had on my feed and just looking at everything overall and my goodness, a lot of my stuff is better pressed now and I am just really happy about that because I love 
the look of better press stuff and just seeing everything together is just so fun but I'm noticing I'm using more color than normal so that's awesome I'm happy for myself so I'm gonna start with the candied apple let's go to spiced marmalade next and get this orange one there's really not a lot of rhyme to the reason here for coloring I'm just giving these butterflies a solid color and then by the body I am going to just go darker you can see that on the red one as well you have to be kind of careful for doing that, that sweeping because it will kind of mark the paper okay now my broken one <laughs> if you remember seeing that break you're you're the MVP but here I go with <laughs> mustard seed my broken one a little bit ironic there and then let's do let's do a light green next this one crushed olive yeah that's that's olive <laughs> okay darker on the centers and then let's do a brighter one how about a green twisted citron this one has never let me down this is one of my favorite distress oxides to use it looks so good with green grass green what is it called the one uh, I don't have it here but it is I think it's grass green it looks so good with that and it just brings a really fun color combination out when I am stenciling so I love that Let's do Cracked Pistachio next, another favorite of mine. Peacock Feathers is just beautiful as well. I don't remember if I have, oh yeah, I do. There it is, Peacock Feathers. We'll do that on this one. I'm just following the colors of the rainbow. There's not like anything too crazy going on here all right let's see let's do a light blue next maybe tumbled glass hmm, yeah let's do that one well I want to do pink purple too blue pink purple maybe I'll just add some blue to this one hmm, I don't know Maybe we'll do like an ombre one. Do some blue on there and then do like a periwinkle. Yeah, like this one, shaded lilac. It's kind of a blue anyway, but to me it looks kind of kind of purple. And then we'll do seedless preserves. Always a beautiful color. Makes you think of jelly. <laughs> Seedless Preserves and what is the pink? Picked Raspberry. That is a good combination for stenciling as well. Same with this one, the Picked Raspberry and Spun Sugar. That is so beautiful. It's like the girliest girly combination ever. It's like a hot pink and a light pink. It looks so cute. Okay. We're just going to make these moths butterflies because you know how I feel about moths. So... Oh, today I had to be so brave. I was home alone and there was two huge bugs in my house. There was a huge spider, which ick, and there was a big wasp in my basement. So I was hmm, not happy about that, but good news is the wasp and spider did not sting me or my cat. So could be worse. Okay, I'm going to take my Spellbinders brush pen. This is a water brush. I'm using the F, which is fine. So it's the smallest one they have. I am not a huge water brush person in general. I like a, a standard brush, but I've been trying to use these a little more and they're growing on me. So we'll do that. Now, my brush was upside down in my utensil cup, so there's a lot of water on it right now. So I do like to kind of give it a wiggle wiggle because I don't know what color I used last and there could be some remaining on there. So there isn't this time, so that's great. Okay. So when I'm trying to keep a color light like this, light on the outside, dark, I start all the way from the light color and work my way into the color 
so I don't make it all one color. Otherwise it just kind of mushes together and becomes one. I'll show you that on this one so it's really easier to see because there's two colors there. So my brush is wet and starting at the light spot and then kind of working my way into that other color. If I was to go the other direction and go this way to the tip, it would make the whole thing that color and I would lose the light. And then in between butterflies here, I am just wiping my brush on this microfiber towel that I have off to the side because this water brush does have water on it, so it kind of self-cleans in a, in a way. I'm so glad that I was able to use this butterfly, butterfly, butterfly press plate that has been in my stash for almost a year now, so I'm glad that I have something to pair it with. When I move back into my new craft room, my better press plates need to have a good spot to be so I can continue to go back to them. So I will get back to you on how I'm going to do that. And if you have any ideas, let me know. But I got to figure out something because I need to be able to access my plates in a more organized way than just sticking them in a box. <laughs> uh, but we'll see how that goes. There's a, I have a bunch of Christmas ones. I have a lot of kind of cutesy florals, and then there's some like miscellaneous, like that sun face, these butterflies, frames, sentiments. I just need to figure out a way to have them all together and be visible because out of sight, out of mind, and that's what happened with this butterfly one. And I could have used it a whole bunch. Now after painting it, I want to glimmer it because you can glimmer better press plates. If you didn't know that, now you know. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to go ahead and watercolor these little ladies and then get back to you. I'm gonna do these on camera. I'm not going to have my voice be on it because I'm just going to chill out and paint which is my favorite. So I'm gonna do that. I'll put music on so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll talk to you at the end about everything. This video is almost 30 minutes already, so I gotta keep her moving.
watercolor to now that I have finished watercoloring both of these beauties I love 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 them they are so pretty if I do say so myself I think the paint does a lot of the work for me and the water brush is so growing on me so I'll be using that more in the future I'm sure so let me know your favorite in the comments I am going to go ahead and add some matting behind each of these and turn them into some pretty cards and I will have pictures of those at the end of this video so <laughs> I hope you can pick a favorite maybe wait until you see the matting colors on the back to pick a favorite but I really do like this set I think it's super fun to know that these were made by him by his hand and not from a computer I think that is really just beautiful shout out to Antonio for this very elegant press plate collection Anyway, thank you so much for watching, Crafty Friend. I would love for you to subscribe and like the video, and please join the Better Press Babes at Facebook group on, face, on Facebook. We, Melanie and I, Melanie Smith or Melanie Stamps, and I co-run that together, and it is for everything Better Press. So if you have Better Press projects you want to show us, join the group. I know a lot of you have already joined, so shout out to you if that applies. Anyway, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope you get to better press soon. Bye, babe. Hey, wait, before you go, did you grab your Weekender craft kit yet? There is going to be a virtual event called The Weekender, and it is a virtual retreat, and you can pre-order your kit now. It is going to take place on May 17th through the 19th. There's going to be 10 hours of crafting with all of these amazing designers. So make sure that you grab your kit today. And Jennifer McGuire is also going to be joining us. So she was just added now today when I'm recording this. So she is not on this infographic here, but she is going to be there as well. So you're not going to want to miss it. There's a value there of $550. I mean, what? <laughs> So yeah, there's a ton of product. There's lots of dyes and some fun stencils and an embossing folder and a stamp set to tie it all together. So it is on sale. Don't worry, it's not actually $500, but the value itself of the kit and all of the classes is that. So be sure to go ahead and follow the link in the description of this video so you can go ahead and join me and these amazing designers. I am extremely honored to be part of this group and I can't wait. So what are you waiting for? Grab your kit and come craft with us. Bye-bye.